This week's news from the tubes and F5 Live is proudly powered by Malwarebytes. Whether you use a PC, a Mac, or a mobile device, Malwarebytes Premium is the company's strongest protection ever. It fights threats that traditional antivirus software can't stop. Uh, it, act it actively blocks things like worms, rogues, dialers, trojans, and a whole lot more. It allows you to use your computer and mobile devices with confidence and peace of mind. And to learn more and to get a special price, you can go to f5live.tv slash malwarebytes. All right. Um, so we've been talking about Ukraine a lot tonight because obviously it's a big topic uh, and what's happening over there has a lot of potential impact uh, across the globe. But one of the things that has really been highlighted by what's been going on is uh, something that Avram and I have talked about several times in the past has been the centralization of the internet into a couple of companies. Um, when the AWS issues happened uh, a couple years ago and even Netflix went down, uh, we, we talked about why that was a problem. And now we're seeing a new reason why it's a problem. Uh, because from all sides, it's been real easy to, uh, to block the flow of content. Um, uh, Russia blocked Facebook, I think. Uh, definitely Twitter. Uh, I'm almost certain YouTube. I can't remember all of the platforms. Yeah, YouTube and Twitter pretty quick. I think they threatened on Facebook. And when this was written, it hadn't happened. But I think now it might have. Um, and then you've got big tech companies who said, you know what? We don't want uh, we don't want our platform to work in the country. Not because of political pressure, but because of their own uh, decisions. Um, and then you've got companies who are pulling content. Uh, you know, Apple uh, pulled some apps out of the iPhone store that the Ukrainian military was using uh, for coordination. You've got, um, you've got uh, Facebook and Twitter that before they were pulled, they were, they were actively censoring content in, uh, in Russia. It's definitely an interesting idea, right? That the flow of content mostly comes in a very small, very small pipe these days, which is, the joke about the name of the segment news from the tubes it's the 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 sources has have really uh shrunk down and if you have a couple of of these big tech companies say no you don't get that content anymore that content is dead this is not the first time we've seen it of course uh but this is certainly i think the big blinking light over top of the problem I mean, yes, but you also have, uh, my understanding is that Russia has actually cut off a lot of these things yeah. too. So it, it hurts the ability of people in, um, of people in Russia to get objective sources of news mm -hmm. for them to, to, to get news that is not being provided by their government, which is definitely not an unbiased source. They shut down uh, the the last news station in Russia that was not government owned uh, this week. The employees walked out right because uh, they were told to get out of the building, and they just left in the middle of the broadcast. Right. So, so you know, on the other hand, you could say, well, we're we're concerned about these country about companies that are uh, censoring, but on the other hand. If you live in a certain type of uh, country, then the, I mean, the thing that everyone should really be worried about is government sponsored censorship. Yes. When folks talk about a platform like Twitter or Facebook or even YouTube uh, uh, blocking content or blocking a region, they are a private company that is within their rights to decide who do we want to broadcast to and what do we want to broadcast? Sure. They are not, they are not a government entity of any government. Uh, and so therefore they have to decide what, what looks good, what works right for their brand. Right. Good example. I'm staring at right now on my screen. YouTube has controversially decided not to pull Russia today. 
So, oh, do they change uh, their mind on that? Well, I'm looking at it right now, and it's live wow. on their site, and there are videos that have been updated, uh, videos that have been updated as, as recently as seven hours ago. Okay, actually, live coverage too. Um, okay, because and because they had pulled both RT and Sputnik at one point. Yeah, there. Are, I mean, I don't know. But I haven't looked for Sputnik, but RT uh, is right here, and uh, also, and RT has. Um, let's see. Uh, instead of referring to it as a war, they refer to it as the Donbass Special Op. So, uh, I'm sorry. My mind is on Futurama, and I definitely heard you say Donbot, and that's not what you said. Don Boss. I may be okay. pronouncing it wrong, but uh, the because uh, that's the uh, because they were in the Donbass region. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, so this had been pulled from so many places that they actually laid off their American staff earlier in the week. Right. So YouTube still carrying it, right? Or well, carrying um, it again. Some, or, or right. Some some have argued that this is, um, you know, Russian uh, propaganda. Now, on the other hand, you know, I guess in a free society, you well, you could argue that in a free society, you should allow different forms of information whether you consider them to be uh truthful or not but the but yeah it's like that uh, so different now you might ask what is youtube's motivation i don't know maybe youtube's motivation is very simple is very simply that they don't want to be seen taking a side in the conflict maybe youtube's motivation is that they would very much like the millions of views that they're getting from our, from people viewing RT. Sure. I and, I don't know. And in in reality, even even if it is a hundred percent known propaganda, which of course it's the thing that Russia is best at, uh, so it okay. it shouldn't be a surprise, right? Um, but being able right. to see what their take is on the world has value. <laughs> Even from an entirely uh, propagandist standpoint, being able to see what they're, what they're saying has value. It's the thing that we yeah. didn't understand during World War II, right? We didn't understand exactly what it was that was being said in Germany because the internet didn't exist. Right, yeah, no, I mean... <sighs> I, well, first of all, this is being broadcast to a. This is being propagandized for a U.S. Uh, audience mm -hmm. or for a Western mm -hmm. audience. So I wouldn't necessarily say this is a perfect mirror of what people are seeing in Russia. Sure. But uh, you know, I guess the problem is what people uh, nicely call media literacy, right? Uh, right. It's oh, how do you know that this is propaganda? Um, can, do you know how how to take this with a grain of salt? Do you do you right. understand what the motivations of the source of this are? Um, unfortunately, people can be not very discerning right. uh, with what they believe on the internet. So, you know, if it's, it's owned, operated, or funded by a government, don't care which one. <laughs> there's propaganda in there, at the very least, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, fair. Fair, fair enough. I mean, but a lot of things are not "quote unquote" owned by a government. And you, you know, look, one yeah. person's propaganda is another person's. So, like, there's a sure. lot to sure. this. There's a lot to this. I understand why, why a company would decide, hey, we don't want to, we don't want to become an arbiter of truth here. Sure. But they're all. But the reality is also that a lot of people believe the stuff that they're seeing, and and then. Uh, some of the blocks, things that are getting blocked or maybe blocked because Russia's blocking them, it's like, hey, wait a second. There were a lot of Russian bots participating in 
things on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. Now all of a sudden they're now all of a sudden the bots have nowhere the bots are have to stay home or something. So <laughs> unless of course so, an exception has been made. <laughs> yeah. I don't Cause, know. Because if so, if the bots are state sponsored, <laughs> those data centers might yeah, be they, exempted from the ban. Right. Yes, I heard somewhere, and maybe this is not backed up by actual like studies that the the bot traffic had had dropped. But I would imagine I, so. I you know, uh, lots of different businesses it'll, are having it'll move to, to Belarus <laughs> are having to make their um, you know decisions about how they're going to navigate uh, navigate this conflict. Do they want to be seen as kind of Switzerland? Not Switzerland today, I should say, but World War II Switzerland. Say, a great yeah. example up uh, until seven days ago. Yes. If you, <laughs> do they want to be seen as Switzerland of traditional Switzerland position of we we don't take a side no matter what? Uh, or do they see the, the cost of that? So, right. you know, just as we said that Facebook and you know, YouTube is keeping Russia Today going. Uh, Facebook and Twitter are, well, was Twitter was dropped by Russia, not the other way around, right? Correct. But they've so, also been, they've also been very active in pulling content. Right. And then on the, on, on the other hand, you have companies, um, you know, like Coca-Cola is, uh, Coca-Cola's, uh, no, not pulling out at all, but Visa, Visa and MasterCard are. So like Microsoft, you know, every, no new, no new sales of any Microsoft products in Russia. Right. So, you know, you could, I mean, there's an interesting philosophical question going on here, which I really don't have the answer to, which is, you know, obviously there's, even if you, uh, stringently disagree with uh, Russia's invasion of, of Ukraine. You know, do Russian, pe- you know, do the average Russian people would be buying Microsoft Office? Uh, you know, is denying them Windows or Office going to to change anything? Right. I, I don't know. You know, is denying them um, is denying them Coke going to change something? I don't know. I mean, I think part of it is that these companies. Uh, don't want to be seen as supporting uh, something that is rightfully very unpopular right now. Mm-hmm. And there's also school of thought that if if economic life in Russia becomes hard enough, then it it then the uh, pressure on the Kremlin to to pull back uh, ratchets up, even if you know, even if Putin himself has all the copies of Microsoft Office that he'll ever need. Um, <laughs> so, although maybe uh, he won't get updates. Will he get security updates? Will they get Windows Update? It's a fair question. I don't know. The, I mean, the wording was no new product sales. Right. So, I mean, it, it's just an interesting it's an interesting question because when you, I mean, part of what's going on here, right. Is that Russia is, is hurt so much by this because they've been integrated into the global economy in the last 30 years. Right. Right. If this were happening in 1987 or something, these type of sanctions probably wouldn't help very much. But now because Russia is using everyone. In Russia is using Microsoft Office and Microsoft Word. This might hurt them, right? Uh, if this situation goes on for, I don't know, years, then then you have to presume that they're going to start making their own more of their own products, right? That allow them to be more separate from the global market, like you know. They don't need, I mean, they could make their own, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, software talent there and there's open source things that they could mm-hmm. get. They could very easily switch everybody over to some flavor of Linux, although maybe they could, although if the Linux, I don't know, 
I don't know, can Linux cut somebody off from getting the latest kernel? I don't know. But even if that's the case, even if that's the case, that doesn't really matter. I mean, you can still spin your own Linux pretty well, right? right. Um, so, I mean, you know, they when you do these things, they definitely may eventually uh, cause uh, Russia to go out and look for their own internal solutions for some of them. Uh, look at Huawei, right? They built their own version of uh, of an OS since Google has cut them off from uh, Android. Yeah. Now, you know, that doesn't mean that Microsoft shouldn't do this because, look, I mean, it is absolutely hurting, hurting that country right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is also a statement by these companies to say, like, we don't want you know, we're, we want to distance ourselves, ourselves right. from this, uh, you know, f distance ourselves from this. So, you know, I, I, I don't know what the answer is, but I mean, obviously, obviously it's good for people to have a free flow of information, uh, is the problem though, that Facebook has too much power or that the Russian government is able to cut people off is able to cut off all independent sources of news. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, that's that's part of the thing. There's been talk for, for years about a, a, a second web, right, that's non-centralized in any way. Um, you know, Tor was kind of an attempt at that, um, which is actually incredibly popular in Russia, despite or possibly because it was developed by the military. Um, but this, this splinter might be the thing that, that pushes it further, uh, conceptually, who knows? Uh, you know, like you said, anytime something like this happens, there's, there's bobbing and weaving that happens around it. And, uh, maybe this is the thing that, that brings up a, a second generation, of of the web or of the internet as a whole who knows that this whole thing i think the point of both i guess all three segments <laughs> that have dived into it in some way tonight uh i think the point is that changes are going to come out of all of this um some for the better some for the worse we don't know exactly how it'll happen but the one thing we know for sure is changes will come from this decentralizing production of neon in in Ukraine and chips in Taiwan and uh, de possibly decentralizing the internet all of those things are are realistic uh, and possible yeah I mean I think part of it also though depends on how long this goes on yeah right uh, so obviously a lot of these things have been put in place with the thought that this is going to go on for a long time and maybe it will, but the, the damage to Russia's economy seems pretty severe right now. So, you know, I don't know what happens. I asked this question in the discussion I was in on, on social and folks said, there's no way that this would actually happen, but like what happens if, I don't know, tomorrow uh, Russia decides to, to pull back we've suffered and not you know or they found a way to find a way to save face or something like that yeah and they and they pull back do the sanctions get dropped right away does uh you know does everything go back to the way it was a month ago right how like how soon does normal come back if normal comes back in a month do you think people are going to worry that much about the ramifications of it i don't know i don't know yeah it's it's all it's all there's a lot of conjecture, obviously. Um, who knows? The, it, but it, it's definitely making a lot of us think about things in a different way, which is not necessarily a bad thing, right? Taking, taking a look at something from a new perspective can oftentimes be a, a positive and healthy thing. Um, obviously, the lives being lost the number of which is equally in question because, uh, you know, propaganda for both sides. 
so the number we don't know, but obviously the lives lost are, is not is not worth the, the the new perspective. But I mean, if, if you were looking for something to come out of this, a new perspective on a lot of things might be might be that silver lining. Who knows? But I don't think this is going to be a short term thing. I think we're going to be talking about this for a while. And seeing effects of it, like you said earlier in the show, the effects are not going to be immediately undone, even if they were to back out tomorrow, because, you know, whole parts of the Ukraine are on fire. Uh, so even if they were to pull out tomorrow, the, the effects of this will be felt for a while. So we'll definitely be keeping an eye on, on how this affects uh, the tech world and the things around it. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of F5 Live Refreshing Technology. If you did, please uh, subscribe to the channel down below, and of course, hit the notification bell because we know that subscriptions don't mean much on YouTube anymore. Uh, if you've got topics that you'd like us to talk about in the future, please uh, comment them down below. And if you'd like to not follow us on YouTube, there's lots of ways that you can follow along with our content by going to plughitslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows and all of the ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along.